Okay, so hi. <laughs> I am back from the hospital. I took an unexpected trip to the hospital this week. And so I thought I would do like get ready with me and I would just kind of tell you what happened to me and the reason why I didn't have more than one upload last week. And I just want to say real quick, thank you so much for all of the loving messages and support that you gave me while I was in a very, very uh, dark time. Um, this particular story, <laughs> this experience, it involves poop. So I'm giving you a fair warning. If you are eating lunch or breakfast or whatever time you are watching this, I would suggest eating what you're eating first and then come back and watch the video. And if you are sensitive to stories with fecal matter <laughs> involved, don't watch this, okay? I'm not going to go into too gruesome of details. I'm going to kind of keep it I'm going to skim off some of the most gruesome details, but I'm going to give you a pretty somewhat uncensored version of this experience that I had. But it is funny. I can laugh at some of the things now, but honestly, there was there was a moment in this situation where I was kind of staring into the abyss, okay? So it is. it does get serious at some points, but I can laugh at some of the things now that happened because poop is funny. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put on my primer, which is the Wet n Wild Primer. The Impossible Primer. I'm probably not gonna tell you everything that I'm putting on my face because this is more of a chatty video. So yeah, if you're new here, hello, I'm sorry, this is your first video. <laughs> I'm also a fine artist, so I love to do drawing and painting, and I mostly do faces like portraits, um, but also in an illustrative way. But I do love makeup, and I do makeup videos too, so if you'd like to subscribe, feel free. But make sure you got that bell on and all that jazz. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I post almost every day on Instagram, so I try at least. Okay, so I didn't realize how dirty this sponge was until I went to go wash it. I did my best, but don't judge me for the sponge. Judge me for the story you're about to hear, because <laughs> this is small potatoes compared to what I'm about to tell you. So this story begins on Tuesday of this past week, and I had not, I had been experiencing these cramps in my pelvic area for a couple of days and it kind of felt like if you were to go and have an exertion of exercise like an ab day or something it kind of felt like that and I thought okay well I've had a hysterectomy right and that was two months ago so I was thinking maybe this is related to that so I called my OBGYN and set up an appointment for Thursday and explained what I was experiencing so it wasn't until Monday night that I I started to think I was like man I haven't gone to the bathroom in a few days and I turned on my side because it was really uncomfortable to sleep on my back and I usually sleep on my back and so I turned on my side and I could feel like this mass shift like it was a painful like sharp pain kind of and then I felt something shift in me and I can't really explain it. It was like a ball. <laughs> it felt like a ball. And I was like, okay, that's not normal. I've never felt that before. And I had noticed that my belly, below my belly button, was really hard and very tender to the touch. And I was thinking to myself, maybe this is related to constipation. You know, I was like, I haven't gone in a couple of days. And so I decided to go out. Well, that, that day I had actually taken some colase and a stimulant laxative like a gentle stimulant laxative and I was like okay so the next morning nothing happened and I was really starting to feel really uncomfortable and I talked to my mom and I said you know what I'm gonna go out and get a number of different things because I was starting to get desperate and this was Tuesday day <sighs> And so I started to, I, I went to Walmart and thank God I went to the self-checkout because this was insane. I had a basket full of like enemas and uh, I had suppositories and just things that you buy whenever you get desperate. And have you ever had that magnesium citrate crap? Oh my God, I had a bottle of that. And I was like, that is my last ditch effort because that thing is nasty. That stuff is nasty and I hate taking it. And it upsets my stomach. But it works, I know. 
but I really didn't want to take it. But it was like a dollar fifty, so I got it anyways. So that day, I decided to give myself an enema. Now I am very familiar with these things because I was whenever I was pregnant many years ago, I had to give myself several of them, and I have had occasional moments in my life where I've had to give myself them and you know they're not pleasant and for those of you who have never had one had to give yourself one or had to, had to have somebody give give you one I really think you're lucky okay you are very lucky that you've never had to do that I, I envy you but I thought usually that that works that gets things going so there I am wondering what is going to happen so a little bit came out and I was thinking maybe, maybe it was like a pop the cork situation where I would go and then just a little bit and then all of a sudden it would come out, you know, throughout the afternoon. That's what I was expecting at least. And that didn't happen. I'm going to do my brows off camera because, because it just takes a lot of concentration. I'll be right back. Okay, much, much, much better. I use the brow lift from e.l.f. I've been using this thing for a while. I absolutely love it and the e.l.f. Ultra Precise Pencil. I really just don't feel the need to buy more than one brow product at a time. I don't know, maybe I should try more. Basically, okay, so when I had my first little bowel movement after that enema, I thought it was all gonna come out after that. And I felt some rumbling later on and then nothing but like the saline came out. And I was really starting to get worried and so I thought, okay, well, I will do a suppository that will be my last ditch effort because I'm not drinking that magnesium citrate stuff. So <laughs> I did that. And if you've never used this suppository, it's, it's when you put this little thing up your bum and it's supposed to stimulate the bowels and it's supposed to work within like 15 to 15 minutes to an hour and nothing happened after an hour. And that was about seven o'clock at night and I'm going, okay, it is probably time to go to the emergency room because something is really, really wrong here. And I was starting to fear that I had a bowel obstruction. And I'm going to use my eye primer from Juvia's Place. <laughs> and I thought to myself, crap, what if I have an obstruction and they got to go in and like get it out? And ooh, gross, right? So I told my neighbor who's 85 and he takes care of my cat during the day. He likes to hang out with him. He was like, well, you know, I'm really worried about you. You should probably go ahead and go. And I'll, I'll look after Jack. And I was like, okay, thank you so much. I love you. And I went to the ER and I told them what was up. I told them everything that I had tried. And so they took me back and did a CT scan. And I waited a while because you know it takes a long time in the emergency room unless you're absolutely dying. And the doctor looked at it and came back and he said, well, he said, you know, you don't have an obstruction, good news, right? He said, you have a lot of air in your belly. And he said, that is kind of bothering me because you've recently had that hysterectomy. And he said, you do have a lot of poop in there and you really do need to go. He's like, so you are constipated, but you have a lot of air in your belly. And I'm concerned about that. And I just want to call the surgeon and see what he says. So I'm going, okay, you know, and so they call the surgeon and talk to the surgeon and he gets back to me. And this is over a span of like 8 p.m. to like 2 a.m. <laughs> and the surgeon says basically, look, you know, we have to admit you because we need to make sure that, you know, this could possibly be a bowel perforation. And I had heard of what it was, but I didn't know what it was for sure. So stupid me decides to Google what a bowel perforation is. It's essentially a hole in your bowel area and it can happen after surgery sometimes and it can happen through several different causes. And so I was telling, like, okay. And so I started reading about it and it can cause sepsis and it can cause death. So I'm going, oh my God. I could possibly have something that's life-threatening. So I really started to worry. I was really worried and I was, you know, I started praying. I was like, look, <laughs> please don't let me have this, please. You know, um, I'm, I'm young. I have my son. I don't, you know, I started thinking about, you know, my son and 
how I, I, it's just too soon. And I started thinking about my loved ones and really, you know, I'm not kidding you. I was like staring into the abyss for a moment. And if you ever heard that saying, you know, if you stare into the abyss, the abyss stares back. <sighs> wild, just <laughs> wild, you know. And for those of you who know me and know my story, I have a whole video on my journey with health and I started to have some health problems when I was 28. Actually, I've had health problems all my life, but like I, I've had back surgeries, I've had neck surgeries and procedures and had major surgeries, and, but yet I had never had anything that threatened my life. So that was very, 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 that was a dark time. It really was. And I'm not even joking about it. So they admit me, okay? And it's about 2 a.m. Let me go ahead and choose my eyeshadow. I think I want to do something green because I'm going to be filming my favorite eyeshadow palettes that are green and my favorite art supplies that are green soon. And I might do that today. So still adjusting to kind of getting back into the groove of things. And I got to do a monthly review of my makeup that I have tried. And I really love this little pickle palette. Oh my God. But I really want to do something with the blends palette and the surge palette by Blend Bunnies by, yeah, Blend Bunny. Why am I blanking on this? Blend Bunny Cosmetics. So, oh, I have to have fun. Okay. Oh, look at this neon green. <laughs> so we left off with me. Wow. Okay. We left off with me getting admitted. It is about 2.30 a.m. at this point. Going on three. So I get this nurse that he is kind of more pragmatic than a good bedside manner. He didn't have a good bedside manner. Okay. And if you, I mean, I really do respect healthcare workers. I do. I do. Because I have had some amazing nurses and amazing doctors over the years. And I can really appreciate the time that you spend on your feet doing what you do. I do. And yet this doctor or <laughs> this nurse, I just think to myself, why do you go into this profession just to be an <laughs> Like why put in all that money to go to nursing school and do all that you got to do if you are not going to respect the patients that you are waiting on? So this nurse was asking me all of my medications and keep in mind, I am in pain. I am full of and <laughs> I'm tired. So we went over the medications and everything and so far so good, right? Well, I asked him, I said, hey, you know, I, I take something for sleep. I take trazodone and gabapentin because otherwise I tend to be up with like flare ups and things like that and I just don't sleep well. And so I've been on these medications for quite some time. And <laughs> so he tells me, <laughs> that, um, well, it's, uh, you know, it's real late at night and, you know, I, the pharmacy's not open. I'm going to have to, you know, call a doctor. I really don't want to call the doctor and blah, 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 blah. And, um, he's like, well, unfortunately he had this voice that just grinded my gears. <laughs> and so that didn't help. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't like man buns. And he had a man bun, which made the whole thing <laughs> more aggravating. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, unfortunately, you know, the pharmacy's not open. And I was just like, I said, you mean to tell me that I got, I, I, I have to wait until 9 a.m. And I have to go without my meds. Lesson learned, if I'm going to the ER, or tip for any of you all, if you're going to the ER and you have medications, bring them with you. I wasn't thinking straight. You know, whenever you're in pain, you're not cognitively thinking about what's best for you sometimes. So I decided to try and get him to understand that I have to have these sleep meds. And I'm like, dude, I've been taking these for years. And I said, if I don't have them, I won't sleep. 
on top of this, I had a terrible headache, like a terrible headache that was in the back of my head, was in the front of my head. It was just everywhere. And that could have been because I didn't have my meds or just because I was sick in general. But he just, he's, he refuses. He just really didn't want to call the doctor at that, at 3 a.m. I wish I would have thrown a fit and I don't throw fits. Okay. I'm not one of these people that I was raised to be polite and to be kind and, but yet be, you know, be strong and stand up for myself. But everybody has a breaking point. You know, even the nicest people have breaking points. I wish I would have thrown a fit, but he made it seem like I was just out of luck. Like too bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I didn't have my meds. I didn't have my sleep meds. He didn't. Also, I found out on the second night, he could have offered me melatonin. I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm pissed. So, you know, when you aren't feeling good, the last thing that you need is somebody to be negligent or to make you feel like you're going to be a hassle if you have to go out of your way. Really? Like, that's the last thing that you need on your plate when you're not feeling well and you're in the hospital. It just makes a huge difference having somebody there to come visit you. And I didn't have anybody, you know, they won't allow, you know, anybody into the hospital because of COVID and everything. So it's just, it was just a very, very dark time. <laughs> I felt immediately better. Like once I started to empty myself out essentially, and I was just like, okay, I'm ready to go, you know, but they wanted to keep me another night for observation, just make sure that I don't have any issues. And as it turns out, didn't have perforated bowel. So I was just really, really, really happy about that. Just so happy about that. They kept me on a liquid diet until the, the second day, but unfortunately I wasn't able to like choose any of my food. So they brought me like turkey and gravy the second night. I was just like trying to get enough in me to, you know, show them that I'm making an effort. You know what? I need some more dimension in this. So I'm trying to think of what happened next. Oh, um, I essentially just started to get, you know, I was happy. I was really incredibly psyched that I was going to be going home the next morning. And guess who my night nurse was? And I'm, you know, did you know that you can actually fire a nurse? You can. Yeah. Uh, my friend who is going to school to be a registered nurse, she is currently a position lower than a registered nurse. She's working in a hospital right now. And she said that, you know, if you ever have any problems with the nurse or you just, you know, if they're negligent, if you don't like them and they're just, they're not helpful, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can fire your nurse. You get, you can call the charge nurse or the head, of, the department head and um, the head of nurses or whoever is on the schedule to schedule that floor that night or that day on that shift. You can talk to them and say, Hey, I don't want this person taking care of me. X, Y, Z. This is why you can complain, whatever. You could fire a nurse. I wish I would have fired that nurse. Because he just fought me on everything, just everything. He made it difficult for everything. So I said to him, I said, you know, I was kind of having some heartburn that second night, probably from that stupid turkey and gravy. But I said, hey, um, I take pantoprasol twice a day. And I was wondering if I could get, you know, my antacid medicine. And he said, well, it says here that you only take it once a day and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, I take it twice a day. Well, we went over your meds last night and I said, look, dude, and he started to cut me off and, you know, he said, you know, it's not authorized and blah, 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 blah. And, and I just said, they get me a Tums. How hard is that? Like, I kind of just, I started to lose my temper. I yelled at him. I don't like yelling at people. It's a waste of energy, you know, and it wasted my time and his time. And I was just like, and he never got it, by the way. So I had to ask the nurse tech for it. Also, I watched some like it hot because <laughs> there was nothing on TV that night. And for some reason, hospital TV, I don't know. It's like a, it's like you're in a time warp when you're in a hospital and I don't watch live TV usually. And so this was uh, very interesting to me and I thought it was a very cute movie. What I watched of it, I didn't watch a whole lot because I started to get sleepy that second night after I had my meds. And what was funny was I think that nurse really figured out that I was I'd had enough. And so whenever he gave me my gabapentin and my trazodone, he said, he's like, okay. He's like, I'll stay out of here for the, you know, for the night. And I was like, cool, 
cool dude. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I also, before he left, I said, hey, I said, have you ever been in this situation before? I said, and he's like, what, in a hospital or, um, you know, under the, you know, surgery under the knife? And I said, both. And he said, no, fortunately I haven't, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah. That's what I thought. I promise you, I'm not a combative person by nature, but I just do, I don't have time for that kind of crap. Ooh, look how pretty that is. Ooh, although that's really pretty too. So I decided to use both. I really, really like how they turned out. One of them was from the Blend Bunny palette, the Surge palette. It was that orange shade. Um, this, this one right here. This is Zip It Up. Okay, that's in my first part here. And then we've got the Glam Light Pink Pro palette, which I really love. Like, look, it's like a... It's like a paint, actual paint palette. It, uh, it appeals to the artist in me, for sure. But it's this cadmium yellow shade, and it's got kind of a green reflect, as you can see. So pretty, and they blend together so well. So I'm going to do my eyeliner, and um, I'll be right back. Okay, I have a low battery, so I'll just talk till it goes dead. I have a high respect for anybody that can do their eyeliner on camera, like liquid eyeliner on camera. That's my goal one of these days, okay? So I'm going to use my e.l.f. Putty primer because I'm pale. I'm, I'm sorry, not putty primer, putty bronzer and tan lines because I need a little bit of dimension. I know it's not really contour, but it'll work. So I finally got to go home Friday morning and they told me I was going to be discharged about 8 a.m. and it took them two hours, of course, to get all of the paperwork and everything. So I know I sound negative in this video, but really like it wasn't a good experience and it is what it is. So I uh, I went ahead and they had a shower and I just, I felt disgusting. You know, have you ever been in the hospital for a few days and it's like your breath stinks and your hair's greasy and you just, you, you're ready to get out of that gown. <laughs> And I honestly was just, I was ready to get out of there. So I thought, you know, this might make me feel a little bit better. And thank God for my mom, because she brought me some breath mints too. And I just didn't want to ask them for a toothbrush. I thought, I'll just do it at home. I'll brush my teeth there. And uh, I was just so thankful to come home. Like, I was so happy to see my mother. So happy to see her. I was so happy to see my cats whenever I got home. I was so happy to see my son whenever I got home. The amount of gratitude that this experience brought me is immense. Immense. I mean, I'm always thankful for them, but like nothing, nothing really, really makes you more appreciative of the people that you love, like a good stay in the hospital that's not fun or an experience that, you know, could possibly threaten your life. Not that mine turned out that way, but that moment, you know, I, I they thought that it was going to be life threatening, you know, and so I just, I got emotional. I really did. I was, I was very, very emotional when I talked about it. Like, you know, I cried to my mom, you know, told her how much I loved her. And really that's essentially the thing. We're never guaranteed tomorrow. And we know this, but when you're in a hospital and you're, you're, you can't see anyone and you see nothing but illness around you and you think about how, you know, every once in a while we get woken up to our own mortality. Like I have so much gratitude for you guys. Like you guys have always been so supportive of me and I love every one of you. Like even if I don't know you right now, like just you watching this, I love you. And the people, you know, I've met so many wonderful people just having a YouTube channel and an Instagram and connecting with people. And I love those people. I love everybody. Even the negative comments that I get every once in a while, like that's okay. You know, that's not really what matters. That's not what's important. The view counts are, aren't important in the big picture of things. And, and that's just it. The amount of subscribers that I have. Yes, it's important, but in the big picture, it's not important. I love cream blush. This drop of a hat by ColourPop is so pretty. No, I'm going to use my brush. I don't know what I'm thinking. The woman in the emergency room, the woman who was checking me in and, and telling me, you know, asking me questions like what's my date of birth, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, um, she was really sweet. I was, didn't have any makeup on. I was under fluorescent lighting and everything. And she's like, you're so gorgeous. I was like, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, I really just didn't, that was, I did not feel gorgeous then. <laughs> so little things like that definitely help whenever you're on your trip. So I don't want it to seem like, you know, I'm just completely griping about the nurse. You know, there were, there were good things that happened. It was, it was an eye-opening experience altogether. 
it also took me a while to once I got home to really kind of rest and catch up I essentially spent the last two days sleeping and just resting because it takes a lot out of you you know you should be resting in a hospital you should be recovering in a hospital but my with my experience I just didn't you know, it was just a very uncomfortable stay, so it took me a few days to kind of bounce back. And I don't know how to describe it, but every time that I, you know, am in the hospital, it's like I, I it's like you get out and you're just like, whoa, because it's like a time warp. Like time stands still whenever you're in a hospital while the outside world is continuing to go on. Dude, I love Kaleidos highlighters. They're always so beautiful. They're beautiful. I hardly use anything else usually. I've got two new e.l.f. products for lips. I've got something called Nectar. It was a free item whenever I ordered this one, which is a, like their sheer slick lipstick. It's called Grapefruit. Okay. Oh, that is very, very pink. I like, I like green and pink together, so that's just my preference. And then we kind of have this more warmer tone here. Oh. Okay. Looks like we're doing pink, my friends. I'm putting this. Looks like we're doing pink, my friends. I'm putting this NYX suede eyeliner, or eyeliner, lip liner on. My lips are kind of chapped too. I can't quite describe it, but it feels like I haven't quite gotten my full mojo back. There's just something lingering there uh, energetically that I I don't know if I need to sage myself or what, but it's like I haven't quite gotten the hospital out of me, and it's just kind of. I, I'm not 100%. I'm just not 100% just yet. So I'm going to kind of take it easy this week. And I, I do have videos, including this one, <laughs> ready to go for you. Which will, one of them is pre-filmed before I went to the hospital. So um, hopefully you won't hold that against me. I like to pre-film, so. Oh, I got lipstick on my teeth. That's wonderful. I almost forgot to put my eyeliner on in my waterline. I don't know if this is going to work well in my waterline. I can't remember. It's Electric Daisy by ColourPop. Not really. Okay. That's better. That's a LA Girl Magic Mint Pastel Dreams. Here's a little trick I like to do. Okay, so when your setting spray is still a little bit tacky, you take your highlighter and just put it on a little bit more for a little extra. If you want to glow to the gods, okay? And I do. So. <laughs> so yeah. That's what happened to me. <laughs> so that's why I really haven't been active this week. If you miss me on social media or just missed the videos being more than once a week, that's why all of that happened. So yeah, this was a, a really interesting experience. Like I said, it was eye-opening. And I really have to say that I, I really thought a lot about just the cycle of life and how precious it is and how <laughs> things can just take an unexpected turn sometimes and we don't always know what tomorrow is going to bring we can plan we can have a vision for it but we really just don't know and I want you to know that I love you guys like I really really do I know I mentioned that but truly from the bottom of my heart this is something I love to do very passionately love to do and I love to connect with you guys so whenever I say that in my videos I really do mean it and I spent the next day, whenever I came home, I spent probably a good portion of the day just talking to friends and telling them what happened and because they were concerned and hanging out with family. And I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to give you guys some videos, but I'm going to take a little bit of time to spend some extra time with my family because I've been working really hard on this channel and putting aside so many other things that I should be taking priority over. So please be patient with me, okay? <laughs> and I love this. I love creating makeup videos. I love creating art videos for you guys. And I love doing it all. But if my health is at risk and it's not worth risking my health over even if I passionately love to do it so I really have to take some time to just slow down a little bit basically and so I really love you guys I will talk to you guys later and I will see you in the next video okay bye that's my story of poop <laughs>